Oh, it's chopping time, baby. Hey, thank you for tuning in to my very first YouTube episode. Now, you may know me from Chopper Josh's Garage on TikTok, but if not, nice to meet you. I'm Chopper Josh. Pleasure's all yours. I like to party and build shit. So if you're not following me on TikTok, then you can see here that for the first build of my YouTube channel is this butthole blue soft tail frame sitting behind me. Now we are going to be turning this 1987 soft tail into a very tiny hard tailed chopper. I'm small. I like my bike small. I like my bikes loud. I like my bikes fast. And I like my bikes with your ex-girlfriend on the back. If you're new to knowing me, you'll get used to that. So, let's begin. So the first question to address from the vast majority of my TikTok followers is why even hardtail a soft tail frame? So I'm just gonna start out by saying about 87% or so of people who ride Harley Davidsons nowadays have no clue that Harley Davidson frames back in the day actually came from the factory hardtailed. No rear suspension whatsoever, terribly uncomfortable seats, <laughs> and the new proud owners of these hardtailed Harley Davidsons would take them all the way across the country without complaining. Crazy, right? Why, you might ask? Because from the 1960s, the testosterone level in this country has dropped a plummative 87%. Not even kidding. Google it. And, you know, soft tails aren't even that soft, man. They suck. You can put a really comfortable seat on a hardtail frame or keep the junk stock seat on your soft tail frame, and you literally could barely tell the difference. So, some of the reasoning behind why people like me hardtail soft tail frames is one, they just look badass. And two, the amount of weight that this thing sheds just from being hardtailed. This frame weighs like 150 pounds. But all of this is gonna be gone. We're obviously gonna get rid of the shocks. This giant quarter inch slab of 20 pound steel. These giant tail section cast pieces and this giant 30 pound swing arm and replacing it with this, this 12 pound piece of freedom. Yeah, just this little beautiful angle of chopperometry literally weighs less than just the soft tail shocks, right? That literally weighs less than just these, not even including the rest of that. We're gonna be cutting off more weight than your ex-girlfriend's surgery that you paid for. And then afterwards, yes, I am gonna get up all the parts that we chopped off and weigh them and get an overall weight of what we actually lost. This is my second favorite thing to say. Let's fucking build shit. All right, nerds, so even though I like to be funny and joke around just because I'm probably the sexiest bike builder on the internet right now, there is one thing not funny and not sexy about motorcycles, and that's crooked frames. Crooked meaning the tail section left and right off or up and down off from the rest of the frame. And trust me, guys, people will judge your work. The people who have never even done this, nor even an oil change on their own motorcycle, will judge every little bit of your build. Fuck them! So every once in a while, just to do it the correct way, you should measure. So clearly this is not a well done hardtail kit for a soft tail frame. I don't even know if they make a hardtail well done kit for a soft tail frame. This hardtail well done kit right here is for a shovel head frame. This particular kit right here was uh, from V-Twin Manufacturing. I think they're like 350 bucks. You can pick them up on almost any website. And normally the easier thing would be just chop where it's straight, chop where it's straight, and put it on up. But as you can kind of see right here on center, we're working with about nine and three sixteenths. But unfortunately, this kit is exactly nine and a half. But for those of you who are not significant in math skills as much as I am, that is five sixteenths off. But since we are working with two pieces of parallel piping, <laughs> that overall difference has to be divided in half, which is 5 30 seconds, which is thicker than the wall tubing that we're using. Therefore, it cannot be possible. Now, unfortunately, man, we have to cut up on the bends. 
which then leads to another problem. On center at the tip of the bends, we're working with about seven and three quarters. And this one yet again is off at about six and a half. So there are two possible solutions to this dilemma. We could either cut this section all the way up here and clean all this up and pray that this pipe comes down here for our slugs. About an hour and a half of cutting and grinding just to be left high and dry and disappointed. Or we can cut these sections back to where then the center on center would match what we have up here. And then pray that that doesn't change the length of where we need to make our transmission plate mount. Thus ruining a $300 hardtail kit. So with option one, you can completely ruin your irreplaceable frame. Or with option two, you just have to go online and buy another hardtail kit. So strictly for time and safety reasons, and because this is not my frame, we're gonna go with option two. So our first surgical penetration markings are gonna be about a quarter inch off of the tail section plate plate. That's what I'm gonna call it. So it's gonna be right here and right here. Reasoning behind leaving about a quarter inch off of the seat plate plate is just because if once we get the slugs in there, they don't perfectly line up with our hardtail kit, so we'd have to grind a certain angle to move the slugs just in case to make them line up. So we got a little bit of extra meat on there just to grind a certain angle once we get it cut. I don't even know if what I just said made sense. I'll show you. And then hopefully on the bottom of the frame, the cuts will be either here, 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 or here. I don't know yet. Step one is going to be removing these sweet ass Harley Davidson adjustable soft tail shocks. These don't look tight at all. This is literally <laughs> my toolkit that I'm working with for now. I don't even think I have the size nut for the freaking swing arm pivot bolt, so that might just have to stay in when we chop it. And look at Harley's engineers coming in fucking prime with this flat surface to get your damn fucking socket and extension on that. That is out of pure love of the 80s and 90s motorcycles because they knew that people back then actually worked on their own bikes. Nowadays, they just make everything too goddamn difficult, so you have to go to the dealership and spend $140 an hour to have your own bike worked on. Oh, we'll get to that in another episode. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we ever put this together. Didn't even, uh, you know, tighten the bolt. I only have three-eighths and quarter-inch ratchet and socket, so it's a good thing, because homie ain't breaking off a heavy nut. Unless your ex-girlfriend was here. Once you get the front and the rear mounting bolts out of your shocks, then you could easily just take them out from underneath or above your frame and see exactly how heavy they are. So let's test this theory, shall we? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is crazy. What? Oh my God. Just one shock. <laughs> Dude, it's like one shock is the weight of this entire kit. What? I am flabbergasted. I didn't even cut anything off the frame yet and we're back to original weight. All this crap is dead. Lighter frame, bigger motor means power, baby. So if anybody was ever actually wondering how much does a swing arm on a soft tail frame move, let me show you. Hence the word soft tail, the frame stays solid and the tail section moves. Absorbing bumps in the road to keep your tiny little tushy soft. But how much does it actually move? On the rear of a soft tail frame, the outside cast piece and the inside cast piece of the swing arm are relatively the exact same size. On the stock ride height, they are almost exactly lined up so they are virtually impossible to see separately. A lot of people don't know that on the back of your soft tail frame are these two little bumper stoppers to stop your swing arm from hitting your frame. We are sitting at about a uncomfortable 40 and a half inches off the ground. Stock height. And all the way collapsed. About 42 and a half. You roughly have about two inches of rear suspension travel on your soft tail frame. But who leaves any stock tail old or new stock ride height? So let's just say you're cool and buy these sweet ass lowering adjuster shock bolt nuts. 
and you decide you want to look cool and lower it about an inch and a half. <laughs> then congratulations, because now you only have about a half inch of pivot travel. Bottoming out on every single crack in the road, creating swing arm to frame smushes, physically destroying the whole purpose of a soft tail frame. Next would be to remove the swing arm pivot bolts, so we are going to see if this bad boy fits. Well, it does, and surprise, surprise, they're not even tight. Shocker. And then remove your second bolt. <laughs> and obviously just make sure that no small children are in the area while you remove your swing arm pivot bolts. That yeah, looks better already. Oh. Jesus! All right, man, so now that we got that 97 pound slab out of the way, it is time. So if you guys do follow me on TikTok, you would see the last encounter that I was in with a grinder and uh, it wasn't pretty. So just always remember, safety third. Oh, these are spicy. Our first cuts are gonna be here and here, and then when we cut the bottom, we're just gonna cut it a little short so we can trim off a little bit at a time as we line up the rear. Never measure, just cut 47 times. <laughs> and next cut, just anywhere, anywhere. Don't forget to strap down your motorcycle before you do that. That could have quite tickled. <coughs> oh, dude, that's a heavy chunk. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I can physically not believe how much just that tail section weighs. So now that this frame cannot sit on its own, now we gotta strap her down. That works. Okay. Something like that. <laughs> 